This is the Well-Centered Woman Podcast, a space created to provide practical wisdom for every faith-based lady influencer, creative, and entrepreneur who desires to better manage her emotions under pressure. In every episode, we discuss what it takes to stay centered and sane while operating in purpose using faith, community, and practical wisdom. Grab your journal, coffee, and tea, and let's start getting our emotions all the way together. I'm your host, Tanika Maria, and welcome to the podcast. I'm in my feelings. Episode number two, how unregulated emotions sabotage us in business and ministry. Drake had it right, didn't he? With that song he put out back in uh, 2018, In My Feelings. And as women, we know very, very well that we can show sure enough get caught up in our feelings when it comes to a man, right? Especially a man that does not return that love at the level that we deserve. Can I get an amen? But we can also get in our feelings from things that happen and don't happen in our day-to-day lives. They didn't return my call. My coworker's getting on my nerves. I only had two likes on that post. I still don't have any sales. No one signed up for my course. The people at work getting on my last nerves, my manager, my boyfriend, my sister, my son, my daughter, they're all just getting on my nerves today. And, you know, it just goes on and on. But as a high achieving woman of faith and purpose who is on the move, you cannot, you cannot afford to be in your feelings. And so today, in today's episode, I'm going to share with you how unregulated emotions and being in your feelings can hinder your your walk and hinder you from really walking out all of those ideas, dreams, plans, ventures, the things that you want to do in 22. Before I get into this topic, as a certified Christian life coach and best-selling Amazon author of two books, Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now, A Christian Woman's Guide on How to Get Real, Be Healed, and Move On, and A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the next dimension. Both of these books deal heavily in the area of emotions, our feelings, the decisions we make, and in working with women and in my own testimony, I see continual patterns of lack of emotional mastery, lack of healing, and the inability to be to really uh, properly direct and be aware of God-given emotions to achieve God's purposes in our lives. And this is close to my heart. And so if you know what I'm talking about, again, this is for you. So real quick, according to the Urban Dictionary, the term in my feelings or in your feelings means, you know, when someone gets their feelings hurt due to the words or actions of another, oftentimes resulting in that person being overly emotional and dramatic. (laughs) How many of y'all know about that? And even though the incident may seem to be extremely significant to the person uh, in question, while it may be uh, very insignificant to those around him or her, right? Or also in my feelings can mean when you care too much about somebody who does not feel as strong about you. And there's one other term that we can look at as well called feeling some kind of way. Put that in air quotes, feeling some kind of way. That made me feel some kind of way. And the online slang dictionary says to, to obviously be upset by something, to have obvious negative feelings about a situation is to be feeling some kind of way. And for purposes of our conversation today, we're focusing on number one. We're focusing on getting our feelings hurt. We're focusing on feeling some kind of way in a strong way that can be overly emotional or dramatic and feeling those feelings and then letting them guide our behavior. Remember, as a high achieving woman of faith and purpose, as an, a creative, as an influencer, as a leader, as a professional, your emotions are meant to be a gauge and not a guide. Let me say that again. Your emotions are meant to be a gauge and not a God. But when you're in your feelings, and hey, let's be clear, it is okay and it's normal to have feelings and, and feel them, but it's not okay to just run with the feelings and do whatever because this usually leads to regret. And so what happens when we we are led by our feelings and when we act on them and when they are really strong? Number one, of course, we've all been here. We say things we shouldn't say. Number two, we make hasty snap decisions in a moment of intense emotion that we later regret. And number three, we create additional delay and sabotage our best efforts at showing up in our calling and purpose. So this was what happens when we're led by our feelings and we let our feelings be a guide instead of a gauge. We say things we shouldn't say. We make snap decisions that we regret and we create more delay and more sabotage and more damage in showing up in our calling and purpose. So let's look at number one. 
raise your virtual hand as you listen to this if in the heat of an intense emotion you said something you should not have said and you truly and deeply regret it later i know i have we all have and that urge to just you know let something spew out of your mouth in frustration anger impatience hurt fear and anxiety is incredibly strong when you're under pressure you got goals you have deadlines you've got things to do and then something someone says it lands on you the wrong way. Something happens and it hits your spirit the wrong way and boom, you're in your feelings and boom, you've popped off at the mouth and you've opened your mouth and you just hijack your brain. When you, Your mouth and your emotions, it just hijacks and supersedes all the common sense and see, this can damage relationships close to your heart. It, da- it can damage your credibility and it can damage and impact how you show up in the world. And from a faith perspective, there are a couple of scriptures that I want you to look at and look at on your own free time that you can memorize and meditate on to help you in those moments, what I call Jesus take the wheel moments. So here we go. James 1 19, know this, my beloved brothers and sisters, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. James 1 19, Proverbs 29, 20. Do you see a man man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Oh my God. Let me read that one again. Proverbs 29, 20. Do you see a man or a woman who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Don't let, don't let that be you. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from trouble. My, my, my. Come on, sister, repeat after me. God, help me to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Lord, help me. Lord, let me not be hasty with my words and looking like a fool. And Lord, help me to keep my mouth and tongue out of trouble. Come on through here. But but really, what, what is the practical solution here? Take your time to get your breath and do some deep breathing. When you're in these situations and you feel like going off the deep end, just take some time. Just take a deep breath. Do some deep breathing. Be aware of your body tightening up and all that you're feeling internally. Loosen up before you begin to open your mouth. Remember that person in front of you. And if you care about that person, think before letting those words slip out. Watch your facial expressions and your overall energy and the tone in which you speak because that carries more weight even if you carefully choose the words, your energy and your tone can give you away. Take little breaks throughout the day to take care of yourself. Remember this, as women of God, as a leader, as a creative, as an influencer, as a professional, when you're under stress, stress always diminishes your cognitive functioning. Let me say that again. Stress always diminishes cognitive functioning and you're more prone to impatience and irritability and anxiety until you learn to relax and detach. Unless Until we get to the point where we are able to relax and detach, we will always be at risk of our emotions sabotaging us and hijacking our mouths under pressure. Mm, I don't want my emotions to hijack my mouth under pressure. Don't let that be you, boo. All right. So number two, when we when we get in our feelings and we let these emotions hijack us, it will cause us to number two, make hasty snap decisions while we're feeling some kind of way. And it can be good or bad. Sometimes we make hasty decisions feeling good because we're so excited. And then it turns out to be a wrong decision because we made a decision because we got all gung ho and excited. Or sometimes we make make a hasty and snap decision when we're feeling bad and then we regret that, too. And so this is a situation where, you know, you up and decide to quit a job due to some emotions or a situation and then you later regret it. Or when you jump out all gung ho and excited, you're riding high, you got this great idea and you made a commitment to show up and do something. And you told these people you were going to do that. And yeah, oh, yeah, uh uh-huh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And then you realize you don't later you don't have the bandwidth to pull it off. You don't have the capacity to pull that project off in excellence, but you got all high and your emotions got you strung out here doing stuff that God didn't tell you to do just to please other people, just to front and stunt on the gram, just to be seen. Your emotions got you all strung out doing stuff and overextending yourself. 
That was an emotion-led snap decision. Or it's also the situation when you made a critical decision when you were tired. You didn't, you didn't want to be bothered. You didn't feel like talking. You didn't feel like thinking too hard. And you just said, okay, just go ahead and do it. And you said yes to it, only to find out later that it was completely wrong. And now you, you're wasting time. It's costing you money. And it's because you made a decision and you didn't feel like thinking because you were too tired. And now you're paying the price from that one poor decision. Can I get an amen? I know you guys hear this. Haste is defined as acting with excessive speed and without insufficient consideration. Mm. Haste is defined as acting without with excessive speed without insufficient consideration. It can also be defined as something said or done in a hurried or cursory fashion without due deliberation, prayerfulness, or forethought. Mm, these are great definitions. I hope you catch notes on this. Let's look at a few scripture references. Proverbs 14, 29. He that is of a hasty spirit exalteth folly. Proverbs 14, 29. He that is of a hasty spirit exalteth folly. And let's look at Acts 19, 36. Seeing then in the Amplified Version, seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet. Keep yourselves in check and do nothing rashly. I love that. Let me read that again. This is Acts 19.36 in the Amplified Version of the Bible. Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to keep quiet. Parentheses, keep yourselves in check and do nothing rashly. My Lord, the primary emotions that, that drive operating from a spirit of haste is impatience, stress, and fear. So the bottom emotions, and when we talk about self-awareness, go check out episode number one. If you're aware of yourself, being hasty is rooted in either impatience, stress, or fear. Let not the spirit of haste or being in your feelings or feeling some kind of way cause you to sabotage your purpose this year. So what do you do? So Tanika, okay, Tanika, I made some hasty decisions. I've done some snap stuff. I, you know, I've said a few things. I popped off. My mouth hijacked me. So what do I do? Number one, slow down. And I said this before, you're going to hear me say this a thousand times. So just get used to it. One of my favorite phrases I learned from Shannon Yvette, the devil rushes, God guides. Slow down, you'll get there faster. The devil rushes, but God guides. Slow down, you'll get there faster. Be prayerful and not impulsive. Wait to be inspired by the Holy Spirit when you move. And then when you do move and you got that okay, then move quickly, but wait. Number two, obtain wise counsel. Talk to trusted and wise people in your circle. Use discretion, read, Pray, study, and research before you make moves, before you bust a move. So that's number two. Number one was slow down. You'll get there faster. Uh, the devil rushes, God guides. Number two, obtain wise counsel. Talk to somebody. Do your re research. You know, you can get counsel off videos, reading and listening and, and prayer. And number three, the acronym HALT, H-A-L-T. Never, ever, 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 ever do anything, my friend, when you are hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Don't do anything. Don't make any major life decision. Don't have major conversations. Don't write a serious email when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're lonely and tired. HALT. If you're in any of these states, HALT. Don't make any serious decisions under stress or panic. Making decisions under these circumstances will inevitably create a poor outcome. And as we close this podcast, remember, being in our feelings, take, not taking care of ourselves as creatives, influencers, entrepreneurs, professionals, and leaders can be very, very, very costly in the treacherous times that we're living in. Having a hasty spirit can derail our destiny and purpose without the ability to rule our spirit, master our emotions, obtain wise counsel, and take care of ourselves, we are prone to function in a perpetual cycle of hastiness, fatigue, and poor decisions. We open ourselves up to the wiles and the attacks of the enemy because of the, the spirit of haste diminishes the effectiveness of our spiritual armor. 
Oh my God, let me say this again. Without the ability to rule our spirit, master our emotions, obtain wise counsel, and take care of ourselves, we are prone to function in a perpetual cycle of hastiness, fatigue, and poor decisions. We open ourselves up to the wiles and attacks of the enemy. Because the spirit of haste, it diminishes the effectiveness of our spiritual armor. And that's a wrap. So how have you been doing being in terms of being in your feelings and feeling some kind of way, sister? And what steps are you going to take today to not let your emotions hijack your mouth and cause you to act in haste as we start this new year? I'm your host, Tanika Maria. Let me know your thoughts and takeaways by leaving a review. Blessings in abundance, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me on the Well-Centered Woman podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe and spread the word. Don't forget, you can gain access to more resources in your journey to emotional mastery by going to the episode website and checking out the show notes. Until next time, this is Tamika Maria right here in the journey with you, keeping those emotions all the way together.